Metabolic troubles and obesity go together most of the time. But there are people who are not obese, but in metabolic trouble. So what is it about them that puts them at risk? A team of researchers based in Chile decided to tackle the question, but it is a toughie. It's a case of what comes first, the chicken or the egg. You see, metabolic syndrome is really metabolic chaos. Pretty much everything is a mess. So it's really hard to pinpoint what is causing the problem and what has just simply gone awry because some key component is misfiring. Eager to get to the bottom of the problem, the team turned to a younger generation. They're thinking young'uns will have less collateral damage. Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as we probe what goes wrong early in metabolic syndrome so we know where to start to fix it. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy, a scientist turned gremlin buster, helping you battle sugar gremlins, heifer lumps, and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. Now, the youngins they chose were 16 to 17 year olds living in Santiago, Chile. The reason for their choice these kids had been tracked off and on since they were very little. They used their assessment at the age of 16 to look at cardiovascular risks. No, 16 year olds do not have heart attacks, but they often already have the bad body chemistry associated with heart attacks. So, this is what the team tracked in these youngins. 660 teens in total were assessed. Each teen was scored for metabolic syndrome. The criteria used obesity, high blood pressure, high fat levels, high sugar levels, and low HDL cholesterol levels. If they had three or more of these variables, they got the label of metabolic syndrome. In addition to this, the team looked very carefully at the teen's body composition. Among the variables calculated, was total lean tissue. That is, how much of them was muscle. So, what did they find? Well, like me, you might be expecting the instance of metabolic syndrome to be quite low. Regrettably, this was not the case. 28% of them had the kind of body chemistry that goes with heart disease. Remember, they're on average 16.8 years old. Hush. This really is a sign of the times. So, who had metabolic syndrome? Well, the fatties. 17.4% of the teens were classified as obese, and they had metabolic syndrome. Nothing surprising or revealing here. Everyone knows being fat causes metabolic problems. But... There were 11.7% of the teens that got a metabolic syndrome label without the obese label. These teens can teach us things. The analysis revealed these teens had one thing in common. They were slightly muscle deficient. Now, this was also a problem in the majority of obese teens too. Yes, these guys had more fat but they also had less muscle. When the researchers classified their teens based on low muscle mass rather than obesity, clear pattern emerged. Bad body chemistry came with low muscle mass. Is muscle the thing that really matters? Well, quite possibly, it makes biological sense. Muscles typically take up 75% of the circulating sugar levels after a meal. And, well, they're pretty vocal. Muscles send out a myriad of chemicals, nicknamed myokines, to communicate their wants and needs to the rest of the body. These influence body chemistry. So if you have less muscle mass, your first issue, the sugar you consume 
has less places to go, leaving it with the propensity to wander around, causing trouble. Plus, less muscle mass means you need considerably less fuel to keep you powered up on a day-to-day -day basis, so your basal metabolic rate ends up being lower. Taken together, the odds that what you eat is not actually needed goes up. The way your body deals with this kind of situation is it stores the supplies for a rainy day. But rainy days don't happen on the couch. So, to protect yourself against bad body chemistry, you need to muscle up. Now, this is something you can do, although it does become harder the older you get and you build more muscle when you need more muscle. Stronger thumbs are not enough to improve body chemistry. Leg muscles are among the most important. Ask your muscles to lift things and push things, preferably heavy things, on a regular basis to build more muscle. This type of exercise is referred to as resistance training and it should be part of your exercise regimen. It is important to realize simply moving more is not always a muscle building activity. Cardiovascular training makes your heart muscle strong, but doesn't necessarily add muscle to your frame. It is muscle building that creates better body chemistry and better health. Interested in discovering more ways to create better body chemistry or need a little help getting your body chemistry on track? Visit our website at www.betterbodychemistry.com. Browse our library or enroll in one of our courses or programs. The advice is simple to follow and based on real science, not hype. Know someone who has metabolic troubles. Share this video with them so they realize the importance of muscling up. And if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.